السلام عليكم طلاب رحب بكم بالجروبات المتبقية وراح يكون لنا لقاء خلال هاي المحاضرات الإلكترونية حتى أنطيكم المسكولوسكليتال سيستم حاولت أن أبسط السلايدات وأن نكون نبدي بعض السلايدات عن الأناتومي for refreshment or your uh, knowledge about the anatomy of the bone and later on we will try to discuss the pathology in uh, titles which are very important and uh, try to reach the diagnosis as much as possible because there are in fact many entities in this system so please try to concentrate on the image on the main uh, description for each lesion and uh, we will discuss any things later on. In this uh, diagram we can see the normal anatomical landmarks for the long bone, the site of the epiphysis at both ends uh, of the long bone and the site of the metaphysis just uh, after the epiphysis and in the midway we can see the diaphysis. Also, we can detect the area of the cortex, which is outside uh, on the surface of the bone, and we call it compact bone. Also, in the mid part of the bone, we have a space which is called marrow space or the medulla. The most important thing also is the uh, growth cartilage, which is just the area between the epiphysis and metaphysis, and it is an important site for the uh, knowing uh, if the skeleton is mature or not. And lastly, we have the articular cartilage which is covering the articular surface of the bone. Examples of the plain x-ray of the right hand, we can see the metacarpal bones. We can see on the right uh, image the part of the bones which show the cortex which is very dense as compared to the medulla in the middle. So the medulla, it is the marrow and it is low dense, while the cortex on both sides is hyper dense and it is denser than the medulla. What about the uh, normal anatomy? You can see that from uh, distal to the proximal part, we can uh, show in this image on the left side, the head of the metacarpal, the part of the neck, the shaft and the base. So this is in general normal anatomy. In this example, we can see the lateral x-ray of the knee joint, the normal anatomy. In the green color, we can see the epiphysis, which is near the articular surface of the knee joint. In red color, we can see the metaphysis. And in yellow color, we can see the diaphysis. While the white line, it represents the growth plate, which is fused in this type of X-ray. It is very important to try to describe the features of the pathology in the X-ray. So here we have multiple radiological signs that can help us in the diagnosis or description of at least an X-ray or a pathology. First of all, we should check the bone density. If it is focal, that means it is localized to certain uh, parts of the bone or if it is diffuse, that means involving whole parts of the bone or multiple bones. You should also notice if the density is high or low, I mean if there is any decrease in the bone density, we can describe it as osteolytic or it could be increased and describe it as osteogenic. Sometimes we have mixture of both of them and we call there is a mixed component of both osteolytic and osteogenic lesion. Important feature also to look that if there is any associated periosteal thickening or reaction seen in the film. Also, you should try to check uh, the growth of the pathology. If there is any features of the benign or of the malignant tumor according to the transitional zone as we will mention later on. You should also check the trabeculation of the bone which means the bony component or the bone matrix and uh, the shape of the bone, any deformity, any associated fracture line and also the associated uh, condition of the soft tissue surrounding the bone because sometimes we can detect soft tissue swelling or calcification or soft tissue mass. And as uh, we know, the age of the uh, patient is very important, so we should check if the epiphysis is diffused or not to know if the uh, age is mature or immature skeleton.
In this image showing uh, that there are different pathologies of bone can be seen in different sides of the bone. And also we can see that the image on the right side it is a mature skeleton. Why? Because the epiphyseal plate is fused. While on the left side we can see that there is uh, x-ray or it is a bone of an immature skeleton because there is no fusion of epiphysis. These are examples for bone pathology and we should know how we can uh, describe the uh, transitional zone. Transitional zone will be dire. If we have no soft transitional zone, we will try to use the lesion. We will try to use the lesion in the palm. So if it was easy to use the lesion, this means that the lesion more goes with benign and regular outline. بينما إذا كان من الصعوبة أن نرسم حدود الليجن فهي معناها أنه هي أقرب إلى أن يكون لترانزيشنال زون وايد and أقرب إلى مالجنسي So these are examples The red arrow show us a benign lesion while the green arrow it show us a malignant lesion So the narrow zone of transition as seen in this example it show uh, osteolytic lesion at the lower part of tibia with uh, well-defined margins that lahon can and nursing atraf a lesion bisuhula while in the uh, next image uh, which is demarcated by the green arrow we can see that just area of low bone density involving the medulla and part of the cortex with no obvious boundaries or we cannot judge where is the normal and the abnormal bone. So, we can nurse a proper lesion in the palm. So, it means that this is aggressive lesion or white zone of transition. Periosteal reaction. Periosteal reaction, it means cortical thickening. But, there are types of periosteal reaction. So, it could be solid periosteal reaction as we see in the first image the white area it represents a cortical thickening while the other images are showing more aggressive features of periosteal reaction as we can see in the laminated periosteal reaction there are multiple layers so we can see multiple white lines seen at the cortex. While in the speculated, we can see multiple small white lines that are seen in vertical orientation to the cortex. So we call it speculated. And uh, sometimes we call them sun ray speculation. Lastly, we have an example for the Codman triangle in which we can see only part of white lines that seen overlying the cortex and forming a triangular shape and we call them Codman triangles. So the laminated, the speculated, the Codman periosteal reaction represents aggressive or um, malignant type of periosteal reaction while in the first one the white one we call it the benign or the solid periosteal reaction Okay, so we have in this slide that there are three types of periosteal reaction. In the first one, we see that it is the most important part of the periosteal reaction, which is single layer, solid layer, more goes with benign. So we see on both sides of the cortex there is a regular white or dense line. We call it the periosteal reaction. In the image that is in the middle, we can see that the green arrow is marking on multiple layers. 
So these multiple layers are seen on both sides of the cortex, but more clear on this side. That is uh, represent a periosteal reaction of more aggressive pathology. يعني كل ما زادت الخطوط نفكر أنه lesion هو more goes with aggressive pathology. Lastly, the last image. لاحظ أن البون is uh, surrounded by uh, area of soft tissue swelling وهذا مثال على أنه هناك بعض التيومرز ممكن أن تكون surrounded by soft tissue swelling لكن النقطة اللي نريد نركز عليها بهذا الفيلم هو uh, مثل ما تلاحظون الأسهم البيضاء اللي هي تأشرنا على السبيكيوس أو يسموها البريوستيال ريأكشن اللي هو بشكل uh, vertical lines over the cortex we call it sun ray speculation also what we can see in this uh, film is the red spot which represents the Codman triangle. This is a shape of triangular density seen uh, sometimes in aggressive tumors in association with the bony speculation. So this represents very aggressive tumor that is uh, showing the Codman triangle and the sunray speculation which is more going to be seen in osteosarcoma. Here another example we can see in the image A the solid periosteal reaction in the image B we can see just very thin layer seen overlying the cortex this is also uh, an example for simple or benign periosteal reaction so A and B it is simple while image C it's the multi-layering and lastly image uh, D we can see a very fine sun ray speculation and early Codman triangle seen in the upper tibia. Now we will go on multiple pathologies and we will take first of all example for the malignant or aggressive bony tumor which is called osteosarcoma. Osteosarcoma is usually seen in the metaphysis of the long bones. As you can see here, the lesion is arised from the metaphysis with involvement of the cortex and the soft tissue surrounding area. The density of the bone is mixed density and seen on the right sided picture which show osteolytic and osteogenic features with presence of Codman triangle while on the left side the image is show advanced osteosarcoma which causing soft tissue calcification and swelling together with abnormal bone density. In this plain x-ray of the left humerus we can see that there is abnormal periosteal reaction as you see in the image on the right side the arrow is marking to the side of the periosteal reaction this type of periosteal reaction as you see it is multi-layered so it is which type it is the laminated periosteal reaction so we should think of aggressive bone lesion this type of periosteal reaction is seen in the metaphysis and diaphysis so this is mostly diagnostic for Ewing sarcoma and there is a name for this type of periosteal reaction we call it onion peel appearance in fact this is the early stage of Ewing sarcoma which is a malignant bone tumor and this can be of course proceed to late stage and maybe even result in soft tissue calcification as we can see on the other image this round green area it represents the involvement of the soft tissue so the density of the bone is not clearly seen and the surrounding soft tissue part of the muscle it appears very very dense so this is due to the involvement of the soft tissue area surrounding the bone in advanced case of Ewing sarcoma. We can put in the late stage 
differentiate diagnosis of osteosarcoma because of the uh, very large uh, soft tissue mass. Another type of bone tumor is that which arises from the cartilage and the example is chondrosarcoma. Usually in this slide we can see a large mass usually in the soft tissue surrounding the bone. Because it originates mainly from the cartilage, it usually shows the type of calcification which is specific for cartilage. Here you can see there is mixed density, low and high dense in the right hip joint. This Mixed density is appear like popcorn or just area of ring and arc calcification. This is diagnostic for chondrosarcoma calcification, usually seen in the fourth and fifth decade of life and very large at the time of the diagnosis. Misal al tumor. Uh, osteochondroma from the name osteochondroma it means the bone and cartilage osteo for the bone chondroma for the cartilage so as we see two mixture of the density the dense axel of the bone it is just a protrusion of dense bone similar to the cortex بينما low dense bone is the cartilage which is just covering the bone so, in the image on the left, we can see dense bone surrounded by a low dense area, which is the cartilage. This is the exostosis or benign uh, osteochondroma. This type of tumor is usually benign, although sometimes there are changes in the cartilage that may be more going with malignancy. مثال آخر على الأستيوكوندروما الإيميج اللي عنشوفها على اليمين نلاحظ أنه الأسهم الموجودة فيها تشير إلى أستيوكوندروما أستيوكوندروما which is seen in the knee joint here one is seen just in the upper tibia and projected away from the knee joint while the other is seen in between the tibia and fibula it is widened or causing widening the space in between the tibia and fibula if we have two or more exostosis or uh, osteochondroma, it is called diaphyseal achalasia. يعني من نشوفه multiple نسمي تسمية diaphyseal achalasia. طبعاً إذا قلنا exostosis أو uh, multiple osteochondroma, it is the same. So we should check for the protrusion of the bone. لازم نشوف أنه أكو protrusion of the bone. لازم يكون هذا the protrusion of the bone away from the knee joint so the direction it should be far away from the knee joint and we can sometimes detect the cartilage overlying the exostosis which is seen just like uh, this image as low density area surrounding the bone this plain x-ray is taken for the left thrust you can see that there is abnormal bone density seen in the distal end of the radio. There is expansile, low dense lesion is seen. This type of lesion is called giant cell tumor. How we can differentiate or we can diagnose giant cell tumor? The most important thing is seen just at the end of the lung bone, subarticular, and kullish qareeb min al articular surface of the long bone and also it should be seen after fusion of the epiphysis so it should be seen in the mature skeleton usually it is benign but it can be locally aggressive and show expansion sometimes we can see pathological fracture due to any trauma so here in the left image you can see the green arrow marking the area of discontinuity in the cortex this is the site of the fracture so this is a case of giant cell tumor of the radius with associated pathological fracture in osteoid osteoma 
which is also a benign tumor and seen in the young children or adolescent we can see that the lesion is made usually or typically from a radioleucent oval lesion that is seen in the first image in the CT scan this is oval radioleucent lesion that is surrounded by sclerotic reaction in the bone so this is the classical appearance and sometimes we can see inside the osteolytic lesion a very small dense spot as seen here in the right image so the lesion is osteoma this osteolytic lesion or oval low dense lesion is called the nidus and sometimes this nidus containing small area or spot of calcification as shown in the right image so the osteoid osteoma is a benign lesion made from the nidus and surrounded by a thick sclerotic bone sometimes we can see only the sclerotic bone and sometimes we can see only the osteolytic oval lesion and even we can see both of them together in other cases other examples for osteoid osteoma you can see in the left image only sclerosis in the cortex which is seen uh, just marked by the green arrow here this type of osteoid osteoma is sclerotic once we want to do CT scan it will uh, show us uh, more details as we can see in the image on the right side this is axial CT scan showing the tibia and the fibula the abnormality is in the cortex of the tibia as you can show the red arrow here showing us a well-defined osteolytic lesion in the cortex so the osteoid osteoma is in the cortex and you can see inside the cortex uh, this uh, osteolytic lesion that is called the nida so the whole osteolytic lesion is called the nida and sometimes we can see ossification inside the nida very uh, sometimes occasionally detected in CT scan if we do an isotope scan for osteoid osteoma we can see that there is uptake in the isotope scan so the uptake is seen as a blacky area in the right femur in the mid part you can see there is uptake in form that is seen near the green arrow in both image this is occur because of the nidus of the osteoid osteoma that contain vascularized tissue making this is positive in isotope scan a common benign lesion that is usually seen in the sinuses is called the osteoma usually it is seen as a dense structure in the x-ray or in the ct scan here in this example we can see that there is a around dense lesion seen in the x-ray on the right side showing uh, well-defined margins and it is just marked by the red arrow it is located in the right frontal sinus the same example is taken but in CT scan we can see in this axial CT scan of bone window that there is a well-defined dense structure noted in the right frontal sinus this is represent a benign bony osteoma that is commonly seen in the sinus plain x-ray of the right humerus taken for child you can see that there is well-defined osteolytic or low dense lesion in the metaphysis of the right humerus with very mild expansion and associated pathological fracture as seen the cortex on both sides are not continuous and the lesion is well defined showing industrial thin margins and no calcification no periosteal reaction seen another example for the solitary bone cyst as shown in this image there is a well defined osteolytic lesion seen in the metaphysis of the right humerus and the lesion is 
uh, associated with a pathological fracture as is marked by the green arrow. Also, there is an important sign that seen in this film in which there is a dense bone or dense fragment of bone seen in the dependent part of the lesion. This is called film fragment sign and it is formed because part of the cortical bone is broken and then pass or descend through the fluid of the cyst inside the lesion and forming this sign. So this is a specific sign for solitary or unicameral bone cyst. In this uh, x-ray uh, we can see the right uh, humerus is abnormal uh, there is a large expansile osteolytic uh, lesion uh, seen in the metathesis of the right humerus uh, marked by the green star uh, with associated mild sclerotic margins and uh, this bone lesion is uh, seen just in the area uh, away from the uh, articular surface and in immature skeletons. So it is seen just before the fusion of the epiphysis. Also, uh, on the image on the right side, we can see MRI study done for the lesion and we can see multiple high signal intensity areas with the fluid levels that represent vascular spaces within this lesion. So, in fact, this lesion is a cyst that containing vascular spaces and that's why it appears as a high signal intensity in the MRI and this type named as the aneurysmal bone cyst. أهم نقطة في تفريق الأنيوريزمال بون سيست عن الجاين سيل تيومر أنه تكون موجودة في الإماتور سكيليتون يعني mostly in the children or in the adolescents and uh, usually away from the articular surface and uh, appear uh, expansive with mild sclerotic uh, margins and uh, multiple fluid or hemorrhagic uh, fluid levels seen uh, on MRI study. In this slide, we can see that there is another type of venous tumor which could arise from the fibrous tissue. We call it the fibrous cortical defect. We can describe the lesion as seen in the left image as a very thin radiolucent or osteolytic lesion or area in the cortex of the lower tibia. On the right side, there is an image for the same lesion but in CT scan. We can see that the defect is very clear seen in the cortex of the tibia. This represents a fibrous cortical defect as it is demarcated by the green arrow. Another common fibrous benign tumor, we call it an ossifying fibroma. You can see the image on the left side describing a benign tumor in the lower tibia. Osteolytic well-defined sclerotic margin bone lesion seen in the lower tibia. We call it an ossifying fibroma. It is susceptible to fracture. As you can see in the next image on the right side, there is a fracture line oblique involving the osteolytic lesions that is seen in the lower tibia. So this represents an area of pathological fracture seen in a patient having an ossifying fibroma. Hemangioma of the vertebra is a common benign tumor that affecting the vertebral body and uh, usually uh, can be seen in the x-ray as a vertical striation. You can see the plain x-ray of this uh, vertebra showing uh, multiple vertical dense lines involving the body of the vertebra as you can see uh, in this image on the left side this represents the hemangioma in the uh, x-ray of l3 vertebra while on the right side we have ct scan that is taken for the same uh, vertebra and showing multiple dense spots seen in this uh, body of the vertebra in fact this represents the polka dot sign that is caused by the uh, striation of the vertebra when they are examined by ct scan Here in this slide we can see the MRI of the hemangioma. 
you can see abnormal signal intensity of T8 vertebral body as high signal intensity on both T1 and T2 MRI study. Of course, this is a sagittal view and you can see the abnormal vertebra well delineated in MRI. So, you can know that the image on the left uh, is the T1 because the CSS is low signal and the image on the right is T2 because the CSF space is high signal intensity. Osteomyelitis is the infection of the bone. We can notice that in the early films there may be uh, very minimal changes in the x-ray or there may be uh, even normal x-ray. While later on there will be changes can be seen in the bone as a decreased area of the bone density and later on destructive bony lesion. So we can see all these in the following film. In the image A there will be very minimal changes and even the x-ray seems to be nearly normal. In image B there is a progressive bone destruction which is noted as osteolytic areas in the lower end of radius and ulnar. While in the advanced osteomyelitis, the whole uh, part of the tibia in the lower part uh, mainly and in the fibula, there will be severe bony changes involving the destruction of the cortex and part of the medulla with an evidence of sequestrum, which is the dead bone, which is appear very dense and reaching the surface. And in the last image, you can see the area of the sequestrum is seen overlying the area of the cortex and this represents the complication of osteomyelitis. Another example for the osteomyelitis is the osteomyelitis of the tibia which is noted here involving the mid and lower part of tibia showing cortex erosion or destruction and uh, involvement of the medulla also with a uh, destructive uh, osteolytic lesion mainly involving this part of the bone representing the osteomyelitis. In this image we can see on the right side is the plain x-ray of thoracic spine and on both sides we can see a paraspinal soft tissue density while on the left side we can see a coronal MRI and also there is a paraspinal soft tissue density with abnormality in the thoracic vertebra and the intervertebral disc space. In fact, this is a diagnosis of the most common infection is the thoracic spine which is the spinal tuberculosis. This plain x-ray is taken for the whole body of neonate, which is in fact the stillborn neonate. So, what we can see in this image is the generalized decrease in the bone density with abnormality mainly seen in the upper limbs and lower limbs also in the form of multiple fractures different in uh, size and in areas which are uh, appear to be cystic in nature and uh, even the ribs to uh, some extent are involved. This is an important congenital abnormality which is called osteogenesis imperfecta which is a genetic abnormality that results in the abnormal formation of skeleton. In this plain x-ray which is taken for the chest, upper abdomen and for the pelvis we can see that the general bone density is abnormal because it is uniformly increased in density and this abnormality is due to the abnormal bone formation in a disease called osteopetrosis so opposite to Caffey disease in a neonate we have another congenital abnormality which is showing an increase in bone density and usually associated with extramedullary hemopoiesis abnormality like in large spleen. Plain x-ray of a child having rickets. One of the most important abnormality in the bone in children is the rickets. We can usually diagnose this in plain x-ray of the wrist joint or plain x-ray of the knee joint. So this example in the wrist joint, what we can see? We can see that there is abnormal density T1 
seen in the ends of lower bones, which is appear as curvature in the end of the radius and ulna, and this is called copying and splaying of the lower end of bone. Also, we can see that there is abnormal bony matrix in the lower part of the bones, which is seen sometimes and we call it fraying. So, the green arrow is demarcated here for the copying and splaying, while the red star is demarcated here for the area of fraying of the bones. Also, widening of the epiphyseal plates is very important as part of the criteria in rickets. Another sign which is important in rickets and can be seen in the thoracic radiology is the ricket rosary. This is abnormal enlargement in the area of the costochondral cartilage that is seen as uh, in this image on the left side there is a lateral x-ray of the chest we can see anteriorly abnormal expansion in the area of the junction between the ribs and the sternum we call it rickett rosary as shown here in this well adult we have osteomalacia which represented in adults by the loser zone so this loser zone are appear as area of transverse incomplete lucent line that is seen at different parts of the long bones could be seen at the neck of the femur medially In this well adult, we have osteomalacia, which represented in adults by the loser zone. So, this loser zone are appear as area of transverse, incomplete, lucent line that is seen at different parts of the long bones, could be seen at the neck of the femur medially, or could be seen at the long bone cortex. So, this is called loser zone. Sometimes these osteolytic or radiolucent lines can have changes like sclerosis and this is usually seen to be related to the treatment of the osteomalacia. We have plain x-ray of the pelvis. We can see that the left neck of femur is abnormal because there is a thin lucent area that is surrounded by area of sclerosis. This is represented the uh, site of the loser zone which is seen in patient of osteomalacia after receiving treatment. In this slide we have a radiological sign which is called codfish spine appearance. This is related to the abnormal spine which is seen in both x-ray on the right side and CT scan on the left side usually seen in osteoporosis or it could be seen due to other bone abnormality or systemic diseases so what we can see the shape of the vertebra is abnormal normally it should be rectangular in appearance while here we can see that there is a concavity in the upper end plate and in the lower end plate just as demarcated by the green arouse and this will make the space or the disc space in between the vertebra looks larger than it seems to be so this is the diagnosis of cod fish spine radiology in fact osteoporosis is abnormality that is related to the bone matrix so the number of the trabeculation it will become less than the normal bone as you can see here the normal bone is seen above the abnormal or osteoporotic bone appears below that the number of the trabeculation is less and this is responsible for the generalized decrease in the bone density usually we study the osteoporosis in a DEXA scan. DEXA scan it is a dual energy x-ray absorbometry which is very effective for studying the generalized bone density and 
uh, lastly diagnosis of osteoporosis main x-ray here is taken for the thoracic spine in postmenopausal women on the left side we can see that there is generalized decrease in the bone density in the thoracic spine so as the end plate appear slightly denser than the vertebral body so this happens because of the postmenopausal changes that affect the bone density it is so discontinuous and progress more and more so if there is no treatment or no replacement this may be advanced to make the vertebra in abnormal shape so it may result in wedging of vertebra and lastly kyphosis which is seen on the right side as you can detect the deformity in the thoracic spine so this represents thoracic vertebral body osteoporosis Also, we have examples for the metastasis to the skeleton. We have x-ray of the pelvis and upper femur, AP view, showing multiple well-defined osteolytic lesions, different sizes, seen involving the sacrum, the pelvis, the femurs, and pubic bones. This is osteolytic metastasis, which is a common, can be seen in breast carcinoma or in other types of metastasis. Sometimes the metastasis can be appear as a dense bones. So in this example we can see that the vertebra and the pelvis and even the ribs show an increase or generalized increase in the bone density. And this is represent a case of metastasis from CA prostate that results into diffuse or extensive sclerosis of the ribs, clavicles and pelvis. So metastasis can be appear osteolytic or osteogenic or it could be even mixed both of them and sometimes even sometimes single body vertebra metastasis is seen which is called ivory vertebra as seen in this plain x-ray we can see that the single vertebra which is noted here as very dense vertebral body this represents metastasis isotope scan is one of the most important imaging modality that can help us as you can see in this image of isotope there is abnormal intake in the thoracic vertebral body and in both iliac bones especially the right one and even part of the femur this patient may have a metastasis from other primary elsewhere in the body more advanced imaging we call it PET CT scan this will help us for the diagnosis also for bone metastasis as there is uptake in the uh, abnormal part of the body that contain the malignancy you can see in this patient with the breast cancer there is a high uptake which is seen in the circle on both coronal and sagittal view the coronal view on the right side the sagittal section on the left side so this represents metastasis multiple myeloma is a common malignant uh, bone tumor that uh, can be seen here uh, in the skull uh, and in the uh, right femur and the pubic bone so both x-ray showing multiple well-defined small size osteolytic bony lesion involving the medulla of the right femur and the pubic bone and also few in number are seen just uh, in the lateral skull x-ray uh, near the black arrow this represents features of multiple myeloma more specific sign for the uh, shape of the lesions in the skull of patient having multiple myeloma is called rain drop sign so in this x-ray which is taken in ap and lateral view we can see multiple small well-defined osteolytic lesion involving the skull bone these uh, lesions are usually near each other in size so they are nearly uniform in uh, size 
and they are uh, rather small uh, in size also. This represents the uh, features of the multiple myeloma. Sometimes we can put differential diagnosis, which is the metastasis, to the skull. But usually the metastasis is showing larger sizes and they are not so equal or neat near each other in size. So uh, this can be an uh, important uh, description for both multiple myeloma and metastasis. In hematological diseases, uh, we have example the thalassemia. The thalassemia it is uh, a hematological uh, disease that affects the uh, bone or the skeletal system uh, in the following criteria. We have first of all the skull x-ray. We can notice thickening of the diploid space as we can see that the vault of the skull here is speculated by multiple uh, hair-like lines seen uh, vertically oriented uh, to the vault of the skull. This is called sunray speculation which is related to the thalassemia. Uh, in the hand also we suspect that there will be hyperproliferation uh, in the area of the bone marrow. So we can uh, see that the arrow is marking the metacarpals of the hand and that's showing uh, slightly expansive uh, bony changes and this represents changes of thalassemia. There is expansion of the metacarpals. You can uh, notice them in the whole metacarpal bone. Also, uh, in CT scan, this uh, diploic space or hyper expansion of the skull uh, vault, especially in the frontal and in the occipital area, it's very clear in this uh, bone image or bone window of CT scan in which we can detect these thickening in the diploic spaces. Acromegaly is a growth hormonal abnormality and we have changes in the skull x-ray that will be shown in this x-ray which is a lateral x-ray of the skull showing enlargement and thickening of the diploic space of the skull vault. Also there is enlargement of the frontal airspace sinus and uh, on the area of the yellow star there is a ballooning or enlargement of the pituitary fossa is well clearly seen. Another example of the acromegaly is shown in this lateral x-ray of the skull in which we can see there is area of widening in the uh, mandible angle which is uh, demarcated by the green spot. Also prominent anterior chin which is uh, seen uh, at the yellow arrow and uh, posteriorly there is a prominent occipital protuberance which is seen demarcated by the red arrow. Congenital abnormality, we should know about it, is called a chondroplasia. A chondroplasia, in fact, many features can be shown in the next slide. First of all, this lateral x-ray of a child with uh, which is a non case of a chondroplasia, we can see that uh, the abnormality is in the skull shape. The skull shape looks uh, abnormal because the skull vault is enlarged and there is a small skull base. The green line showing us the area of the skull base which is relatively small in regards to the other uh, part of the skull. Another abnormality which is very prominent in the pelvis and also in the uh, limbs of the uh, child, we can see that here the area of the iliac bone, it looks abnormal. Normally it should be seen as nearly triangular shape but here we can see that both iliac blades are enlarged and appear as square in shape with also abnormal orientation of the acetabulum. We can see that there is a horizontal acetabular roof. Here we have another x-ray for the same condition. We can see that the abnormality is in the humerus and in the uh, bones of the upper limbs uh, as whole. We can see that the abnormality is that broadening of the bones and shortening in their length. So there is a short stature as a result. plain x-ray of a chondroplasia, there is an important sign which is called the interpeductular space. There is a space in between the pedicles of the vertebra. 
and normally the spaces is usually uh, enlarged as we uh, go from upside down while here if you look to the uh, yellow arrow the marker is showing us that the interpedicular space is uh, gradually narrowing or tapered uh, in uh, diameter to reach the area of the sacrum but even if you see that the distance between the two pedicles of each vertebra is decreased in this film which is an important sign also seen in a chondro plate here we have another x-ray showing us the typical shape of the iliac uh, bones we can see there is enlargement of both iliac bones very clearly noted in this film and also there is abnormal shape of the bone which looks shorter in length broader in uh, width and we can see some little bowing of the uh, shape uh, as a whole. Rheumatoid hands or rheumatoid arthritis may be seen in the uh, hands. To start with, we have the right image of uh, x-ray uh, of the hand showing abnormal shape of the fingers because of the ulnar deviation. And we can see there is metacarpophalangeal abnormality in the form of subluxation, also slightly erosion noted. In later stages of rheumatoid arthritis, we can see abnormal deformity of the distal phalanx, which is shown here in both little and index finger in form of what we call it botanier deformity. Also, on the image on the left, we can see that there is x-ray taken for the area in between the phalanx. We call it the interpharyngeal region or interpharyngeal joint. There is abnormal density shown by the red or raw, which represent the uh, late changes that can be seen uh, in the area of the bone in rheumatoid hand. We call it uh, decrease in bone density or demineralization as shown in this image. While uh, that is the image which is demarcated by the green or raw, we can see slightly preserved joint space and area of bone density. So the changes in the mumkin and shuka will have the estimate on the stage and the estimate on the changes in the case of 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 the case Another plain x-ray of rheumatoid hands showing abnormality mainly noted in the uh, area of the carpal bone because we cannot uh, demarcate the whole carpal bone. That means there is a fusion of the carpal bones which could be also seen in rheumatoid arthritis. And there is a metacarpophalangeal joint involvement mainly by erosion which is noted more obviously on the right hand demarcated by the star area. Also, deformity is noted in the right little finger, which is uh, seen in the distal phalanx and uh, showing also fusion of the interpharyngeal joint. The area of the uh, uh, thyroid region also could be involved. Uh, as we can see on the small arrow, there is a soft tissue swelling and erosion in the ulnar thyroid process. This plain x-ray shows us the classical appearance of changes that could be seen in rheumatoid arthritis. We have here the bone density is abnormal. We can see that there is generalized decrease in the bone density of the metacarpal and phalangeal bones. And there is erosion which is well noted uh, as you seen as the uh, green marker. There is uh, erosion in the most important site, which is the metacarpophalangeal joint. Also, you cannot uh, clearly uh, demarcate the carpal bones, so this represents any area of fusion or er erosion which could be seen in the carpal bones. And even mild soft tissue swelling at the region of the ulnar styloid process. So these are bilateral symmetrical changes which could be seen classically in the rheumatoid arthritis. ankylosing spondylitis which is a zero negative arthritis we have early changes that is usually seen in the sacroiliac joints 
and here I put two slides for you on the right side we have the normal sacroiliac joints and on the left side we have the ankylosing spondylitis changes normally the sacroiliac joint is appear as uh, a very thin lucent line in the uh, both side of the sacrum so the triangular shape here which is uh, marking for the uh, left sacroiliac joint it is a very narrow or very thin leucine line this is a normal one while in ankylosing spondylitis there will be early changes in form of uh, bone signal density changes like sclerosis so uh, on the image on the left side which is ankylosing spondylitis we can see the sclerosis on both sides of iliac bone and the sacroiliac joint is not so clear and this represents changes of sacroiliitis And here we have a CD scan image taken in coronal sections for a demonstration of the sacroiliac joints. You can see in image A and B the changes of sclerosis, which is more obvious or more advanced in the image A, while in image B still there is preserved joint space. These changes represent uh, sclerotic uh, areas of sacroiliitis in ankylosing spondylitis. About the vertebral changes or spinal uh, column changes of uh, ankylosing spondylitis, we have early and late changes. In fact, in the lateral x-ray of the lumbosacral spine, we can see abnormal shape of vertebra, which is more uh, towards the square shape. Normally, it should be rectangular, and there is a good amount of space in between the vertebra, while here, we can notice that the shape of the vertebra is more toward the square shape, and this gives an impression of narrowing in the intervertebral disc spaces and on the later stages or in advanced cases we can detect calcification in the surrounding ligaments so as you can see on the green arrow there is a very dense midline structure this is in fact a calcification of the posterior longitudinal ligament in a case of ankylosing spondylitis In this slide, there is a specific sign for ankylosing spondylitis. We call it bumbo spine, in which the shape of the spine is wavy on both sides due to calcification of the posterior and uh, surrounding other longitudinal ligaments. And this results in this shape of the spine just like one piece. And then uh, we can also look for the sacroiliac joint. We cannot detect any space for the sacroiliac joint. And this means that there will be fusion on both sides and sacroiliitis. Common abnormality in the vertebral column is the spondylosis. Here we have example uh, for the lumbar spondylosis in which there is degenerative changes seen in the form of decreased or narrowing in the intervertebral disc space. مثل ما تلاحظون أن هو المسافة بين الفقرات أصبحت very narrow. وأيضا هناك sclerosis in the end plate of vertebra. فإذا نشوف density uh, الخاصة بالvertebra نشوف أنه the end plates of vertebra are more denser than the body of vertebra. And this represents degenerative spinal changes. Also we can see a prominent bones anteriorly which is noted in the lateral x-ray more prominent this is called osteophytes and they are marked by the red color in both views so this represents the osteophytes sometimes in certain cases we can see a small area of gas within the degenerated disc and this represents a vacuum phenomena which can be seen in osteoarthritis changes In gout arthropathy, we have also another criteria. In this plain x-ray, you can detect there is abnormal erosion in the bones noted in the big toy. So the side is the big toy and you can see that the uh, yellow triangle is uh, demarcating the region of the bony erosion which is seen on the medial surface of the uh, big toy, mainly the metatarsal and tarsal bones. Also, uh, other joint is noted on the right side, which is the elbow joint. There is a big soft tissue swelling surrounding the elbow joint with multiple 
areas of small and variable size dense bodies noted within the soft tissue of the joint. This represents a calcified tophi related to the gout disease, which is represented by the star region. So, two criteria noted in gout, the type of the erosion, which is noted medially in a specific site, which is the big toy, and also we have the uh, case of tophi in the elbow joint, which is very clearly noted in this image. This location of hip joint, which is in fact called developmental dysplasia of hip joint, it's a very important subject. And the way to diagnose represents to know the normal lines, which is responsible for the normal pelvis or hip in both sides. So, to start with the normal anatomical line, it is just an imaginary line shown here by the blue color. It is the Shenton line. This line is very helpful to detect uh, the presence or absence of DDH. So, this line should be drawn along the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus. And this line should be uh, regular and uh, smoothly seen along the inferior medial part of the proximal femur just like this image how we can uh, draw this line this will be the normal one another important line for the diagnosis of the DDH we have a vertical line which is called Perkin line drawn perpendicular and just uh, from the lateral most part of the acetabular roof downward. Normally, the epiphysis should be located medial to this Perkin line. Also, we have the highland renal line, which is drawn horizontally, and the epiphysis should be located according to these two lines just in the inferior medial quadrant. This plain x-ray of pelvis show that there is abnormality in the left hip joint. This is very clear because the Shenton line first is discontinuous and because the epiphysis looks very small and lateral to the Perkin line. So you can compare between the left side which is the abnormal and the right side which is the normal. We have here two examples. Examples A in which we can see that there is a left DD edge. This is because the abnormal shape of the left hip. If you try to draw the Shenton line, Perkin line, you can detect that the epiphysis is very small and it is uh, at abnormal position and even the Shenton line, it will be uh, interruptedly drawn. So this is the left hip or left DD edge. While uh, in image B, you can detect both hips are abnormal. If you try to, uh, to draw the Shenton line, or even Perkin line, you can detect there is abnormal site of the epiphysis and even the Shenton line on both uh, sides is interrupted. So this represents also bilateral DDH and even abnormal acetabulum. This is x-ray or plain x-ray of uh, both hip joints in adults. You can see there is a long-standing uh, right-sided DDH with false articulation. So the abnormal uh, articulation is seen between the head of femur and area just superior to the acetabulum. So this is another advanced DDH. The last bone pathology is a process called a vascular necrosis, or more correctly we name it as osteonecrosis. It is a term that is referred to the abnormal death or ischemic death of part of the bone. Any part of the bone could be affected, but we will uh, concentrate on certain areas which are more prone for this pathology. So, in this abnormality, what we suspect, we suspect area of a vascular tissue in the bone. So the bone, it will become nevascularized and after that there will be a, a density changes in that part of the bone in form of low density, sometimes fragmentation of the bone and sometimes as end result there may be a sclerosis of the bone. So we can see this story in the remaining slide. Uh, example 
for the osteonic crosses is a common sight in the children, which is the epiphysis of the femur head. Now we can see the right and left image are uh, marking for the area of the abnormal epiphysis. So to start with in the image on the right side, the area of the femoral neck is broadened or widened as you can see the yellow line. So it is more wider than the right side. Also there is focal area of uh, fragmentation and uh, abnormal growth plate which is seen in the femoral head. So the shape of the femoral head is abnormal. It is fragmented and slightly flattened. Also area of sclerotic changes is seen in the epiphysis. So the density of the epiphysis in the left side is more than on the right side. And this represents what was called Perthes disease. On the image on the other side we can see that there is a, a very clear flattening in the epiphysis and very clear widening in this region so this represents a radiograph including stages of the Perthes disease could be fragmentation could be just area of flattening and sclerosis and sometimes as I said there is a broadening in the area of the femur neck as shown in this image A vascular necrosis also can affect the vertebral body. As you can see in these multiple thoracic vertebral bodies, there is abnormal shape because there is no rectangular shape of the vertebra. Instead, there is anterior wedging. They mean they are anterior triangular shape of the vertebra. This is occurred because of the same process which is the osteonecrosis. There is a devascularization in this part of the epiphysis and the result in the abnormal compression and this if continue this may result into deformity of the thoracic spine and in uh, kyphosis. This is called Sherman disease. As you can see, this is an advanced case of osteochondritis of the spine, which is called Sherman disease. أحيانا ال osteochondritis تستكاز ممكن أن تحصل في knee joint في منطقة الفيمورال كوندايل. في هذا السلايد خلينا صورة عن ال MRI of the knee joint وخلينا X-ray أيضا of the knee joint. الحقيقة صورة very clear في ال MRI تحون أنه there is area of part of the bone which is separated from the original bone in the femoral condyle and in the x-ray you can see slightly or very thin lucent line separating part of the femoral condyle medially from the original bone in fact this area represents area of osteochondritis desiccans of the knee joint which is also due to the same process of osteonecrosis Unit bone is also affected by the same mechanism of osteonecrosis. فمن الممكن أن يكون بالبداية there will be devascularization and fragmentation, sometimes even sclerosis. وهذا مثال على osteonecrosis of the unit bone, which is very dense in these images, and you can see the marker just on the bone, which is abnormal, and this disease is called knee book disease. In the foot, the navicular bone, which is shown here, is also susceptible to the same process. This disease is called Kohler disease. And if we describe this plain X-ray, we can set this plain X-ray showing that there is abnormal dense or uh, abnormal bone, which is seen just in the area of the foot. It is located in the navicular bone region. So this represents a vascular necrosis, which is involving uh, the navicular bone and called Kohler disease. Another side is the tibial tuberosity. You can see in these uh, films, we have a lateral x-ray of the knee joint and there is abnormal area which is fragmented and slightly uh, area showing osteolytic uh, lesions. This represents abnormal site involving the tuberosity of the tibia and called osgood slaughter disease. That is osteonecrosis involving this type of the bone. This is 
uh, job associated with sometimes thickening of the ligamentum patelli which is connected to this region. Lastly, the same process but in the ankle, you can see that the arrow is marking for MRI and for X-ray but for special part of talus which is the articular superior surface of talus, there is a bone defect just slightly separated from the original bone and this represents uh, another type of osteochondritis this you can just like we described in the knee for example here the same process but in the superior surface of talus